Welcome on Dronebird's YouTube channel. This is the product review series and we're going to review the FR Sky V8 Air 7 II receiver and I will show you how you can bind that, how you can set the failsafe and we will review its basic parameters. You can see its basic parameters on the screen. It's a pretty small and lightweight receiver which has 8 channels. It can handle up to 16 volts which means that you can use two or three cells LiPo battery but you cannot use a four cells LiPo battery because a four cells LiPo battery, a fully charged four cells LiPo battery can have 16.8 voltage which is more than 16 so in that way you need to have a voltage regulator to power this receiver up. It cannot be used in PPM mode it can only be used in PWM mode which means that you need to have as many wires as many channels you're going to use. As you can see on the picture it has only one button which we're going to use to set the failsafe and bind the receiver with the transmitter. FRSky transmitter modules can communicate on in two modes. One is the V8 mode which is a non-telemetry mode. In that case no any telemetry data is sent back to the transmitter. The other is the D mode which is the telemetry mode. In that case telemetry data is sent back to the transmitter. It is important because uh, you need to decide which mode you would like to use because there are different methods uh, for binding depends on the mode you would like to use but this specific receiver does not send telemetry uh, information back to the transmitter so we're going to bind it as a V8 mode receiver. Here you can see the list of FRSCRI transmitter modules which are compatible with this receiver. As you can see I divided into two groups the non-telemetry V8 and the telemetry uh, capable D mode kind of uh, modules but referring back to the previous slide it doesn't matter whether you have a telemetry capable uh, module you will not be able to use the telemetry data uh, channel in case of this receiver. Now let me show you how you can bind so connect this receiver with the Turnigy transmitter in V8 so non-telemetry mode. So for binding you need to switch on the transmitter in binding mode and how you can do that is that there is a button at the back of the uh, module this and you need to hold it down while you switch on the transmitter so let me do that. And if you do that, did that right, the red light will flashing and the transmitter will beeping. So right now the transmitter is in binding mode. The next thing you need to do is to power up the receiver. But before we do that, let's just check the pins. So as you can see, the left right now, yeah, the left is the signal. I'm holding right now. The left is the signal, the middle is the positive and the right one is the negative pin. So you need to take care about the, that. So let me power up the receiver. And while you do that, you need to push the button on the receiver. That's all. If the red light is flashing, it means that the binding was completed. So let's check if that was really successful. So let me move, remove the cable. Let me switch off the transmitter. Okay, and now let's just power up the receiver again. Okay, as you can see, it, the red light is flashing and waiting a signal by the transmitter. Okay, let me switch on the transmitter. And as you can see, green light can be seen, which means that the transmitter and the receiver connected to each other, so it was successful. Why failsafe is important to be set? 
When signal lost in a short period, the receiver continues to try to reach for the transmitter, but at the same time keeps the last command from the transmitter until a new command or a signal will be received. Which basically means that your aircraft continues flying, so you may never see it again if it's not set. If you set that, in case of a signal loss, your receiver will act according to the stick positions which was actually set for the failsafe. For example, if you set the failsafe by put the throttle position to zero, it means in case of a signal loss, your aircraft will just fall down. Let me show you how you can set the failsafe. Failsafe setting is also pretty easy. But let me highlight before we start to do that. First, you need to bind the receiver and the transmitter. And just after that, you will be able to set the failsafe. So let's just set the failsafe. First, you need to power up the receiver. Okay. A flashing with the red light, which means that waiting a transmitter signal. So let me switch on transmitter. Okay, right now the green lamp is visible, which means that the transmitter and the receiver is connected. Okay, before we go forward, you need to move the sticks into the desired position because that will be memorized in the failsafe settings. So I'm, you, I'm moving the throttle stick into zero position and the only thing that I need to do is that just push this button for only one sec and the lamp will flash two times which means that the failsafe was successfully set. You can also delete the failsafe settings so if you do not need the failsafe function anymore just rebind the receiver and FairSafe settings will be deleted. Please subscribe, feel free to share these videos and do not forget to raise your questions or comments. Thank you for watching.